Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. And you can also sign up for my newsletter completely free at my website linked below, CorinneBlackstone.com. It's a great place to check out. I've got free SVGs over there, lots of great information, and a couple fun blogs that you can read all about crafting. So in today's video, this is one that you guys asked for after I showed you how to print and cut an 8.5 by 11 sheet of multiple stickers. A lot of you wanted to know how to do this with a single image. So I'm going to show you guys how easy it is. I printed this big Marie on one single sheet out of some heavy cardstock. These would make great birthday party decorations, all sorts of fun things that you could do with these. But it's really easy to do the full page print and cut. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the whole thing using Inkscape and Cricut Design Space. So let's get started. Since you guys asked, I'm going to show you how to do the full page print then cut all in Inkscape, plus I'm going to show you how to do just one image, but you can do the multiple images as well this way. It's really, really easy. The first thing that I need to do is go to File up in the upper left-hand corner. Down towards the bottom, three up from the last, is Document Properties. Go ahead and click on that because you need to make sure that your image, your square, your rectangle, your page is set to the correct size. So depending on what you're using and where you're from, you may need to change this. So I'm going to use a US letter 8.5 by 11. All I have to do is select that and we're done there. The next thing that I need to do is to bring in the PNG that I would like to use to print and cut. Now you can drag and drop or you can go to File and Import. There's a couple ways to do it so it's whatever makes you happy and whatever is easiest for you. I'm going to use this really cute little Marie because she's big and she'll take up a lot of the page. I had a hard time finding a design that I liked that would take up a lot of page. So she's pretty big and she'll take up quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and I'm going to size her down so that she fits into our page. I want to make her pretty big, but the first thing I want to do is turn off this little snapping tool at the top because every time I try to use that when I'm doing this, it wants to snap it too close to the edge. So I think that's pretty good. She takes up quite a bit of the page, you can see. And if you ever want to just check how big she is, what you can do is up here where it's got the W and the H, this is just like with Cricut Design Space, but it's in millimeters, so I want to change it to inches. So using the drop down box, I'm just going to go down to the IN and change it to inches. Now you can see she's really big. I'm actually going to size her down just a hair because she has a little bit of an offset on it and I don't want that to get messed up by the margins. But still, way bigger than what you could print with the Cricut Design Space program. Now, we'll need to make those boxes like we did in the last one. And a lot of you asked what the purpose of the boxes was, and I thought I explained it, but maybe not, so I'm going to go ahead and explain it really quick. If you don't have the boxes in the corner of your page, when you tell Cricut that you want this to cut in an 8.5 by 11 size, it's going to size your image and not just your page, so your image is going to be too big and it's going to cut wrong. So what I'm going to do is over on the left hand side under, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six down is this square. That's going to be create rectangles and squares. Go ahead and click on that and just pull this out and it doesn't really matter how big you make it. You can do whatever size that you would like. Once you've made your square and your square might be a different color, but if you want to change the squares color, you can just go down here to the little bar that's down here and change it to whatever color you want. Now we need to select the selection tool, which is this upper left hand corner arrow. And I'm going to take my little square and I'm going to move it a little closer really quick. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see all these little options. Remember where we had that snapping tool? There is a little box, right? So what we'll need to do is select that snapping tool again. So that upper right hand or yeah, so what you'll need to do is select this upper right hand corner snapping tool again. And do you see this box? It's kind of a shaded rectangle. And this says snap to the page border. Make sure that that is selected. It should be blue. What you're going to do is pull your square into your box and you'll see that it should, and you may have to move it around a little bit, but it'll snap into that corner. So I'm going to right click and copy, and then I'm going to right click and paste. I want to make squares for each corner. It's best to have a square in each of the corners 
That way you will make sure that your page is going to size correctly. Now I'll change these squares back to white when we're done with this because we don't want these to print. So there's the squares. You need to make sure those are in the corners, which they are. And what I'm gonna do is just change them all to white. So you won't be able to see them again, but they're there. And again, it's just so that Design Space doesn't miss size your design. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is go to File, and I wanna export this PNG image. So click Export PNG Image, and you wanna make sure that your DPI is at 200, which is about middle of the screen. And make sure you have Drawing selected. And right here where you see where it says Export As, go ahead and click on that, and that's gonna basically ask you where you wanna save your design. So I'm just gonna save it in my Cricut, and I'm gonna save it in my Print Then Cut, and then I'm just gonna call it Full Page Marie, and I typed that wrong, <laughs> and click on the word save. Now it's not saved yet because you need to make sure that you click export. Go ahead and export that. Now I don't wanna close this because I need to print her out onto my paper, and then I need to put the PNG into Cricut. So let's go ahead and print her first. It's very easy, I'll just show you how to do it. Go to file and click print, simple as that. Make sure you have the right printer selected. I have two different printers, so I wanna make sure that I have the correct one selected before I print her. And then all I have to do is click print. I don't have my material loaded or my printer on yet, so I'm gonna do that off screen. You don't need to see it print, it's just printing. And then I'll show you guys how to load the PNG into Cricut. Over in Cricut Design Space, we're gonna click upload. We're gonna click upload image and then click browse. So what we'll do is we'll find where we saved Marie, which we saved her into the print and cut folder. And we're gonna look for the full page Marie, which is this one right here. Now it's gonna load it like this. So you'll see that it's got your Marie and you can see your little squares right there. Go ahead and choose complex and click continue. Now it's gonna look huge and that's okay. Don't do anything here, just click continue. Now over here, we are gonna save it as a cut image. You'll see that it's just a grayed out design and that's exactly what we want. So go ahead and click upload. Now what you can do is select your image and insert your image. Now again, it's gonna load really big. Cricut Design Space and Inkscape do not communicate very well at this time with sizing. That's why it's important that you make this the correct size on Inkscape. So what I'm gonna do is change my width to 8.5. Your height should change to 11 and you won't need to do anything else. This is what we're going to use to cut out our Marie. Now, if you wanna see how I set up the template to place the image into, check out the video linked down below. All I simply did was covered my mat in some painter's tape, cut out an eight by 11, eight and a half by 11 square with Cricut Design Space and used that painter's tape as a template as to where to set my design. It's really easy to do, really simple, and once you've done it once, you can just save that and continue to keep that for your full page print and cuts. Now, all we're gonna do is click Make It, and we're just gonna cut this out of some cardstock just because it's easy and simple to do that way, so we'll have a big Marie cut out of that, but you can cut this out of any material that you want. So I'm gonna set this to medium cardstock and get this cut. I'll show you guys how to put it on to your mat, and I'll show you a little bit more about what I mean about the painter's tape. This is the painter's tape border that I mentioned. So again, all I did was I put some painter's tape around my mat. I'll put the link below for the video that shows you how to do this. And then I just had Cricut cut out the eight and a half by 11 square and took the painter's tape off from where that cut. Now I do recommend using an older mat for this or a mat that you're only gonna use for this because the painter's tape can damage your mat a little bit. So what you'll need to do, and I find it easier to turn it sideways because I like to put the long end of the paper towards me so that I can lay it down a little easier. And I just line it up with the painter's tape. I like having the painter's tape because it gives you a little bit of a thicker border so that you're able to really press it down. Now with this mat, it is a little bit older, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of painter's tape just to hold the edges down because I do think it's gonna lift a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I can feel this is not sticking very well. This is just heavy cardstock, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of painter's tape just along the edges. 
I've set the machine to a heavy cardstock because this is a little bit thicker than probably medium. And I'm going to go ahead and load my image. So you can see I put a little bit of painter's tape up at the top and then on the sides and at the bottom. But nowhere it's going to cut. It's just to hold it down a little bit better because, again, this mat isn't super sticky. So all I did was load it and now all I'm going to do is hit the Cricut button. The first thing that it'll do is cut out the top two squares. Then it should, with any luck, cut the Marie out and then it'll cut the bottom square. So let's take a look and watch it do that. Now that it's done, let's go ahead and unload it. I'm gonna slide this off to the side here. And all I do to unload my cardstock is I'm gonna flip it over and it should pop off the mat pretty easy. I'll go ahead and leave that behind. And here is our Marie. Now I do like to do this with an offset on my stickers or my designs, just to give it a little bit of leeway for any kind of mistakes that it might make. But you can see this is a huge print and cut off of a Cricut. So this could be great for like a party decoration or something like that. She's nice and thick and heavy. She is really big, really bright and beautiful. And it's a really easy thing to do to trick your Cricut to printing that full page. You can see how much space we were able to use on our piece of paper. So we wasted very little paper. And I'll show you guys real quick the little squares that it cut out because these little squares are how it knows that it's an eight and a half by 11. So you can see these squares cut out in the corners beautifully. Very, very easy to do, but the squares are super important. So you wanna make sure that when you do this, you do squares. But you can do this completely in Inkscape. Inkscape is a free program that you can get at inkscape.org. This is one of my favorite things to do with Cricut now that I've learned how to hack this. And I hope you guys will try it out and let me know what you think. I think this was fun, I think this was easy. And again, I just saved this older mat. I leave the painter's tape on it so that I can continue to use this mat with my bigger than matte print and cuts. But again, you can do this in pretty much any size that you want if you want to use your full sheet and you don't want to worry about having any registration box around it. If you guys have questions about this or any of the other crafty things, let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. I cannot wait to have you guys as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. Again, look at how big she came out. She's so cute, so beautiful, really, really fun. I know you guys are going to ask, so before I forget, I have an Epson ET2720 printer. That's what printed this on the cardstock. And then I also have an ET4700 for sublimation. But this is a really great way to use a full sheet of paper with your Cricut. I hope you guys have a great day and happy crafting.